It's now been more than a week since Jose Luis Garcia was arrested by ICE agents outside his home in Arlita, despite having permanent legal resident status. Garcia was taken into custody on a warrant that stemmed from a no contest plea he had entered on a misdemeanor charge of domestic violence back in 2001. The 62 year old Garcia has been in the U.S. for nearly 50 years. He was granted legal status under President Reagan's Immigration Reform and Control Act back in the 80s. Department of Homeland Security released this statement saying, quote, databases reveal that Mr. Garcia has passed criminal convictions that make him amenable to removal from the United States. Joining us now are Jose's four children, Luis, Joe, Erica, and Natalie, and his granddaughter, Marley. Good morning. Welcome to Good Day Good LA. Thank you. Let's start with you, Natalie. What do you know about what happened? Talk about how he was detained. What happened? I mean, it was it was unexpected. It was a regular Sunday morning. He was drinking his coffee, watering the lawn, what he does all the time. And I just started screaming out my name, and I ran out, and he was being detained by agents and I asked where he was going where, what, what they were doing and they I asked for a warrant and I didn't even know who they were he was practically kidnapped and they just handed me a business card with his alien number and said call this number and you know they said he had an or a warrant for his arrest and f mentioned the 2001 and I was just so confused like there's just no answers you know and it just it ruined our, our lives have been ruined since then and and since then uh, Erica have you heard more from the federal government have you gotten any sort of clarity have you tried to get clarity my sister's been doing a lot of that work I am handling other situations um, it's been very hard and we're not getting no answers at all it, the process is very slow at this point it's just waiting the, there's nothing out there. We don't know what's going on and what's going to happen. We don't we get just calls have to back. Wait. There's yeah. no accurate clarity. There's just it, the process. They just tell us the process is slow. The process yeah. is just slow. Yeah. Just and wait. I, and I noticed your daughter's got tears in her eyes too. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's basically raising my daughter too. I'm a single mom, and he helps me take her to school. And he's at soccer practices and and recitals and everything. He's he's my mentor my care caregiver and he's what we look to you know to oh, help us rock. and joe uh, i know you were able to visit him recently um what was that like what did he say <sighs> he wants to come home um he's not a criminal he's a great guy great father uh he has grandkids uh he said that he wants he is it's it's a nightmare for him yeah. he's he wants to come home back to his family and we want him home uh, do you guys think, do you think that um, this is a Trump administration thing? Some people called President Obama the deporter in chief. Do you think that this is a change in policy or just a continuation of policy? This is just the zero tolerance policy. It's being enforced and it's, it's, it should not be separating children and families. It's not right now. This is a, a national crisis that's yes. happening everywhere. And it doesn't matter how old you are, separating your children from parents is, it's, it's inhumane. You cannot do that. You know, we are of age, but we have children, and our ch we can't even explain it to our own children what's going on because we don't even know. Yeah, what do you say? We don't. We just, we're crying. Like, it, it, we don't know. It's inhumane. The rights, people need rights, and it doesn't matter about the legal status, it's human rights. What's, what's your bottom line message for, for federal officials, for other people that might be watching this? Mm, that laws need to change. Laws need to change. We're humans. We're human beings. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and for, for critics that might say, well, you know, the law is the law, and if you commit a crime, this is part of what the law says. I mean, th he did everything he was supposed to then. Like, there was, there was shouldn't be... There was a, it's 2001, misdemeanor affect somebody's status now when he's been a law-abiding citizen, grandfather uh, has children, has been part of the community since then, and everybody, it shouldn't affect you like this. And it, the law is the law, but it has to have a reform. Yeah, and the, the Homeland Security Department statement said convictions. We tried to find 
any other conviction other than that one no contest plead. Uh, we could not find anything in the state of California. We went through multiple databases. We've mm -hmm. asked Homeland Security for clarity on that and have not been given that. As far as, as you know, talking to him, that, that's it. It's just that one incident, right? And that's, that's the that's biggest it. problem yeah. is the clarity on that because they do not give us clarity. They do, they've specified that one conviction, misdemeanor conviction to me when they picked him up and that was it. The fact that they're saying something else is completely confusing to us because that's part of the confusion and the, there's no clarity. There's no accurate answers. And so uh, you, you now have a GoFundMe page set up to yes, try to do. help out. How can people get involved and what are you trying to get out of that? <clears throat> okay, we want the support, you know, for the whole, what's going on to help out. And um, we, do, we did set up a GoFundMe account, which is free Luis, Jose Luis Garcia. And it's the support in, you know, at this time of need and the situation unexpectedly. And some of that's to help pay for his bail, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And the fees and everything. It's, it's, a, it's been a Legal nightmare. fees yeah. and bail. Well, thank We're you hoping. all for sharing your story um, and um, best of luck to you. I know it's such a, uh, this issue is debated so much, but it is affects real human beings. And there's many organizations that have, have reached out to me. ACLU has been one of the biggest organizations that I've been in touch with. And they're, they t take a stance against this that's happening. And they're helping families and that are vulnerable right now, you know, because this is a national crisis. And it needs, we need to take a stand against yes. it. Yes. Thank you for sharing your story. We'll be right back.